In this week's Blizz Pro Weekly, updates on the Warcraft movie, details on the upcoming DreamHack Hearthstone tournament, heroes might be getting a buy-in program for their beta, and why Rob Pardo's comments during a recent talk have some people up in arms. Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of Blizz Pro Weekly. As always, I'm your host, though a little froggy in the voice today. Chris, the Beard Arnoni, and uh, today we have a very special little episode. We have JR back as writer. A uh, little uh, thing going on with Liz, so none of her this week, so instead we got JR. Let's get straight into it with some World of Warcraft. Here's the beef. So, director Duncan Jones announced on his Twitter feed this week that the Warcraft movie is done filming. Now, the film began early February, and the movie is scheduled to release March 11th, 2016. But of course, with such an epic fantasy film that Warcraft is expecting to be, it's no surprise the post-production is going to take a fucking long time to just get all the effects right. I mean, Paul, how long does it take to do post-production in our little show? It's like three or four days normally, right? So, you know, a two, three-hour movie with shit tons of special effects and things? Yeah, it's a long time. But this week, Blizzard also released a new blog showing off garrisons and how they're going to work. Now, it's been disputed and more or less rumored lately that the rework of garrison is what's holding back the alpha from launching. So with this news, it might mean we're getting a little closer to that alpha release. Some things taken away from the blog are that garrison buildings will have a direct effect on the quest and story as you level. Now, your main garrison will be in either Shadow Moon Valley or Frostfire Ridge, but outposts can be established in other zones based on your building choices. Now, followers have different strengths and should be assigned to tasks best suited for them. NPCs also are going to have improved AI, and evidently you can have them form a conga line around you. Wait, what? That's not... Damn it, JR. Let's talk Diablo. Stay a while and listen. So our Diablo site, diablo.blizzpro.com, has been working really hard to bring you guys some quality articles over the past few weeks. Now, we have put together a regular schedule of awesome content, so you know exactly what to expect from day to day. On Mondays, you can expect the State of Balance feature, in which we'll analyze recent changes to the games and what they mean. Tuesday, we'll be showing you an all-new build for a class. Wednesday, we'll be focusing on an item in the game and explaining how you can use it best. Thursday nights are when Archon and Nineball live stream the Westmarch Workshop podcast. Friday is the Inferno Archon feature, where Archon details about the week in Diablo. Saturday is for basic theory crafting. And finally on Sunday, that's fun day, right? And we go over the Blizz Pro picks of some of our favorite aspects of the game, from story to art, classes, skills, you name it. So if you're looking for solid Diablo news and original content, stay tuned to our Diablo site. All right, next up, let's do a little Heroes of the Storm. So first up, on my way over, like my wife and I are driving over to do filming, I got the email that I'm in the Tech Alpha, so woo, yeah. All right. Now, some of the people I have reported on after installing the EU client of Heroes of the Storm is seeing an ad for just a brief moment of time about paying for Heroes of the Storm access. The ad is called the Founders Pack, and it linked to a Battle.net page that was throwing a 404 error. Now, the description of the Founders Pack is that you will buy yourself into the beta and also get a mount made of solid gold in the game. Blizzard has in no way confirmed that it's going to be a thing, and it might not be at all. However, it does beg the question, would being allowed to buy into the beta work? It certainly has for games like Dota 2 or Smite, and it's not too off base. Also, Blizzard has allowed buying into betas before with the WoW Annual Pass, which guaranteed you access to the Mist of Pandaria beta. So it begs the question. We want to know, put it in the comments, if you had the opportunity to buy into the Heroes beta, would you do it? Right? Let us know. Comments, email, whatever. Let's talk some Hearthstone in the meantime. Pull up a chair by the heart. So the Hearthstone Dream Hack tournament is approaching, and if you want to have a chance to win ten thousand dollars for first place, you have to fight through a two hundred fifty-six person open pool to qualify for the last 
four spots of 16. The other 12 spots are reserved and the players were chosen this week. It's a little unclear right now how they chose the 12 competitors, which include, and this is where we tell JR's back because it's a bunch of shit I'm going to struggle to pronounce. Let's go for it, though. Alchemist, Amaz, Ecop, Ganimish, Ganimish, I don't know. Life Coach, I got that one. And Savages, that can't be right. Savages, 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 that's... It's a lot of, of consonants, man. Uh, anyway, but popular stream Raynad said it was best on Twitter. The difference between being seated and not seated in DreamHack is whether you have to go 4-0 to win the tournament or 20-0. Needless to say, it's going to be extremely difficult for those to make it through the open bracket to succeed. But if they manage to do so, it will be quite the feat indeed. Now, we had something scheduled for you today on this show that was going to be a, a BlizzPro bitch session, but... Uh, what it turned into was a lot more real than that. Uh, so recently, Polygon posted a mostly insightful article called Erasing Your Audience Isn't Fun, The False Choice Between Diversity and Enjoyment. Now, it talks about game developers that prioritize fun over diversity, particularly calling out Nintendo and Blizzard. Specifically, they talked about Rob Pardo's recent talk he gave at MIT. Now, the following is all a quote from the article on Polygon. The author asked about epic entertainment experiences where Blizzard focuses on gameplay and de-emphasize narrative, and how the company's perception of their audience might affect how they portray socially progressive content. Pardo responded, We're not trying to bring in serious stuff or socially relevant stuff. We're actively trying to preach for diversity or do things like that, he said. His example of a place where Blizzard struggles is portrayal of women. Pardo notes that because most of our developers are guys who grew up reading comic books, Blizzard games often present women characters as a sexualized comic book ideal that is offensive to, I think, some women. Now, first off, I listened to this talk, the, specifically the part they're talking about. Pardo wasn't throwing around any venomous hatred of women, nor was he denouncing diversity in any way. What he displayed was male ignorance of diversity that is prevalent in both the gaming industry specifically and our whole culture at large. Now this really ties into the recent recent conflagration online of the hashtag not all men and hashtag yes all women debates that have just been raging all over the internet. Now Pardo says that games don't have a responsibility toward diversity. It's the same as saying not all men or not all game developers. It's basically guys just throw up their hands going well it's not my fault. That doesn't help. It doesn't doesn't do anything for the argument. It doesn't, doesn't help. It's weak. It offers nothing to uplift women in our society or promote diversity. It is simply Pardo throwing Blizzard's hands up in the air and saying, hey, we didn't do it. You're right, Pardo. Blizzard isn't knee-deep in racism and misogyny like Grand Theft Auto or the recently released Watch Dogs. Blizzard is not the, is the not-all-men guy, sitting in the corner of the bar being nice to women and ignoring the assholes in the room that are blatantly violating a woman's rights, rather than stepping up and letting those assholes know how intolerable that behavior is. So do game developers have a responsibility to address diversity and difficult issues? We all have this responsibility. Period. Yes, Blizzard is in the, ga in the business of making games. That means first and foremost, to create a fun experience. But you can do that. You can create this epic experience and be socially responsible at the same time. You don't need to preach to audiences to be responsible. It is this constant passing of the buck that has perpetuated misogyny and rape culture. Now, if we all stood up and stopped ignoring these problems, we could end this epidemic. Would a guy just grab some random waitress's ass in a restaurant if he knew a dozen people would jump to their feet instantly in her defense. And the bigger platform you have, the more of this responsibility you bear. As Stan Lee said, with great power comes great responsibility. Blizzard, having a massive, devout fan base gives you the power. It's time to use it. Shoulder the responsibility, make those strides, make a fucking difference. And if you do, Rob Pardo, I'm guessing you'll see more women applying to further your cause. Now, I've got some parting thoughts that, not related to gaming or Blizzard in specific, but this whole situation on the whole. When we talk about ignorance, 
I see online, and a lot of it's well-placed, a lot of rage. A lot of women get really, really mad about this, and for fucking good reason. But here's the thing, too, if we're talking ignorance. True ignorance, someone saying something and having no idea how insensitive or how wrong that thing could be. Take a breath. Take a step back and educate. Because if you go straight to rage, if you go straight to that anger, that puts the other person straight on the defensive. Whereas if we take the time to talk to them, to educate, maybe instead we'll gain a new feminist. We'll teach someone about diversity. Save the rage for the people that know better and are still like this. For the people that refuse to learn. Or for the people who go on a rampage and kill almost a dozen people because they want to blame all their problems on someone else rather than themselves. But there's a flip side to this. Don't assume that you have nothing to learn about diversity. Don't assume you're not the ignorant one. If someone starts telling you their story, trying to help you understand why you said something insensitive, listen. Listen and learn. It's the only way we will move forward and be better at this as a society. All right. There's a somber one, but that does it for this week's show. So subscribe right here on YouTube. We're also on iTunes. You want to check out blizzpro.tv. Listen and subscribe to The Edge, West March Workshop, and Don't Kick My Robot. Me, I'm all over the internet. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Goodreads author. My book is on Amazon. It's also on Nook over at Kindle. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, email at us at askthebeard at blizzpro.com. And of course, check out blizzpro.com. All the news reviews, interviews, everything you need to know about Blizzard Entertainment Games. Stay beauty, my friends.